One thing Louisiana never fails to deliver is a glorious sunset. It seems that every year we visit Acadia Parish, we're treated to a fiery display in the western sky. The west has always symbolized possibility, whether in the afterlife or the chance to start over, to do better. Business people in the south looked westward for connecting to riches in California. Indeed, the United States purchased land from Mexico for a railroad long before any railroad was built. Part of our national culture is this whole idea of moving west, our imagination soaring in the ideal of growing strong in the epic western narrative. Justin Hayward of the Moody Blues wrote the lyrics, A beautiful adventure waiting there in the western sky. Is it any wonder that Southern Pacific Railroad named their premier passenger train the Sunset Limited? Amtrak now runs the Sunset Limited from New Orleans to Los Angeles, the train we feature in this episode. If you're interested in chasing the sunset, you could hardly do better than boarding the Sunset Limited. If you want to see a magnificent sunset, you could hardly do better than Acadia Parish, Louisiana. While the Sunset Limited begins its journey in New Orleans, we'll board in Lafayette, a bit closer to this colorful ball of fire. First, we watch this fire as artisans craft metal into tools and ornamentals. This is part of the open studio tours held in various locations in Acadiana. This event was in the small town of Morse at the studio of notable artist Simone Little. Artists and artisans from throughout the region participate, including my brother, Harold Letts. It's here we got to see blacksmiths demonstrating their craft. Yeah. Or they make a nice decoration just hanging yeah, in your hall or them, yeah. whatever. I'll have one of these hanging in my kitchen. Yeah, these are handy dandy <laughs> tools. So. That's the flipping steaks over there. It is, really. yeah. Well, if you want to take a big old roast out of the oven, oh, yeah. great for that. Just take oh, two yeah. and hook in. Probably got a little bit more hammer than I do anvil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, for what I'm working on today, it works just fine. Michael Leger explains how a square bar or even a railroad spike can be transformed into useful objects. Like these tools, you know, I've made these out of a, uh, it's called a sucker rod. It's an industrial hard rod that the all field uses, which works really fine. I couldn't tell you the, the material. It could be like a, a 4140 steel or something like that. But, yeah. So you make your own tools, chisels, punches, decorative pieces, whatever. You know, whatever. Like these tongs right here, are, these are hand forged out of a, a railroad spike. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, you make your own, you, li you know, tools like your little rake. These are all, these are all handmade just for the purpose of moving my pole around. So yeah, so it's all part of the fun, and it just grows from there. This talk of railroad spikes reminded me that we'd soon be back aboard the Sunset Limited, heading toward Los Angeles.
a new H. We're through Crowley, my hometown, and headed to the last Louisiana stop, Lake Charles. During the winter months, the rice fields are either fallow or converted to crawfish ponds. Soon, we're having lunch in the dining car, asking the waiter to hold the pickles, and looking out on the town of Mermentau. They have like extra pickles. People want extra. <laughs> yeah. No problem yeah. today. We're gonna have all mine. So we're going over the Mermentau River right now. Did you want? No, it's all right. There's actually a good, good point of view here. You might get reflections. We pass rice dryers, old and new, as we roll through Lacassine. It's here that we pass the fields where I used to work driving John Deere tractors and waving at the Sunset Limited as it passed. Little by little we approach the border with Texas. This half-sunk boat sets the scene for the border crossing along with this bayou. This wild swampland holds my imagination as we enjoy the last few miles of Louisiana. Now we cross the Sabine River into Texas. This part of Texas is not very different from Louisiana. Stretched out along the Sabine River, this looks like some kind of ruins. Yet this is still an active port for barge traffic. Southeast Texas has a long history in the petroleum industry. The famous gusher Spindle Top was in this area. This region continues to refine and transport this black gold. Here we enter Beaumont, Texas. The following day is spent in West Texas, a very different terrain from the Southeast region. West Texas is dry, the beginning of desert country that extends for the rest of the way west into California.
You may have heard that there's nothing like a West Texas sunset. Well, watch this one and see if you agree. We cross the Rio Grande River, the border with Mexico, into the state of New Mexico at El Paso, Texas, the westernmost point of the Lone Star State. We had been in Texas for 900 miles. We're looking south and we soon find ourselves only feet away from our good neighbor, Mexico. A fence stretched out along the border. Sometimes it's dark when we leave El Paso, but this year we got to see the light of the magic hour, the last light of the sun before nightfall. As the second day ends, we still have hundreds of miles to go before we reach Los Angeles. We arrive in L.A. in the dark. I think that no train was ever better named than the Sunset Limited from Southern Pacific's premier passenger train to Amtrak's great southern route across the west. The Sunset Limited delivers all the enchantment of a western sunset. <laughs>